Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Resonance Arcade. Uh, we're playing Metal Gear Solid 3 today. It's uh, one of our Let's Plays. It's the first time we've played Metal Gear Solid 3. This is the one Lou's looking forward to because there's an exploding wheelchair in it. Yep, and I've said that I'm willing to donate... How much did I say last week? Another tenner, I think. Oh, no, you, then you went, no, no, 20 quid, I, I, I No, up to 20, yeah, 20. If you, can, if you can shoot the end in the head in his wheelchair first time, then I yep. will add 20 quid instantly to the... The um, amount that I'm donating. Good stuff. I, I don't know where that is exactly, so I said I'm, well, I'm relying on Sam. Yeah. yeah, we'll have to make sure you've got a sniper rifle before we get to that point, but I'm pretty sure you do anyway, but let's just see how we get on. Okay, okay if I don't do it, Sam has to donate an extra £20. <laughs> That's not something we ever agreed upon. <laughs> I'm not okay. gonna. I'm not gonna lose you your ineptitude. That's not fair. <laughs> well, that's what I've been doing for the last three months. <laughs> yeah, but you often do. Right, I haven't looked at any of this, so I'm just gonna check the settings before we. Uh, Whilst he's uh, doing that, I'll just go over quickly what this game. I mean, it comes pretty apparent what the game is, but if you didn't know and we've not already spoken about it, this game is a prequel to the whole Metal Gear Solid like saga. So this is. Um, it's set in 1964, I believe, um, and you play as uh, Solid Snake's cloned dad or whatever. Well, he's not a clone, he's an original normal person. Um, a big boss before he earns the right rank of big boss when he's uh, a soldier working for the CIA. Been set that, on a mission. These, uh, these settings, I like MGS1, I like MGS2, I like MGS3. <clears throat> what if you like them all? I don't know if they make I don't know if they make any difference. I've never been able to figure out what the hell difference it makes. <laughs> Which one do you like, Chris? <clears throat> oh, go straight to European Extreme European if you want. Extreme. Let's not do that. <laughs> that let's, let's... going to shoot up. To Is that digits. where people try and kill you with baguettes and... <laughs> <laughs> all, the, all the enemies are on unicycles. Garlic and paella. <laughs> we'll fucking chuck in random Nazi cuisine at you. After the end Nazis of throw ninja and swastika death stars like in... <laughs> East and West. Uh, since it is the beginning of the important the Cold War. at the end of World War Two, the Cold War started. Just so you know, right? Because if you didn't know that, you might be you know, totally in the dark as to what's going on. That what have you been doing all your life? Yeah, really not studying twentieth century history. Uh, you're probably the type of person who spent all yesterday queuing up for a crap TV as well. <laughs> yeah, I don't Apparently really get that because it's like can you not just buy that shit online and get it delivered to your house. Why would you yeah. cheap, probably here? cheaper for as cheaper. well. Cheaper. So for those those yeah, people who don't know, it was Black Friday yesterday in England. It's like the fourth year we've done it in England. Previous to that, we didn't even know it existed, I think. Um, Fucking Black Friday cock American dick. <laughs> okay, let's let yeah, be a little bit more eloquent. and. Uh, <laughs> so yes, um, I, I, I bought a TV last weekend not knowing that it was Black Friday this weekend, but I'd only saved 20 or 30 quid anyway, so who cares? And you didn't get trampled to death in the process. Yeah. And apparently, there's seven call um, seven call outs to Tesco stores around here um, for by the police. So. Right, there was uh, one occurrence at an ASDA where apparently the gangs had organised themselves so that they was waiting for people to walk out with the TVs and just take it off them. Other well, violent supermarkets are available. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I don't believe that uh, Sainsbury's done anything for Black Friday. Good work, Sainsbury's. Yeah, Jamie Oliver's massive fat tongue blocking the door. <laughs> so does this guy look exactly like Snake then? Yeah, Looks, that's like because you. Snake is a clone of him. Yeah, yeah, no, but... but... Oh, spoiler! Does this panty waist? <laughs> what? It's just an insult, I think. What do you mean, spoiler? We already explained a few episodes ago that it's of, by the point you get to MGS3 that there was so much marketing involved that you knew that it was Big Boss. You knew that he's it was still, his dad, essentially. He's still got his turbo mullet as well, even though it's not him. He's got yeah. everything. So the voice is the copied, same and everything. So, so Snake copied his dad's clone, well, his clone sort of donor's turbo mullet. But also the power mullet was very ahead of its time in 1964. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't going to become a thing for at least another decade. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, this. Oh, there you go. This is Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater on his helmet. I never noticed that before. That's pretty cool. That's because this oh, is the HD edition. We're go are we going to uh, get the full intro here, Sam? 
we get uh, the full the music. Yeah. Uh, that actually doesn't start until you've done the the prologue mission because the actual Snake Eater mission isn't the first part. A bit like the Tanker chapter, there's there's an opening mission and then the intro sequence starts and then the main Snake Eater mission starts. This is called the Virtuous Mission. This one. Yeah. So this this will probably will hopefully be able to do the Virtuous Mission in this first episode. Second episode will probably start with the Snake Eater thing and go from there. I don't know. We'll see how how long this takes to get through. I remember this first mission not being taking that long. It's not huge. Uh, those people that you see there are your support team that are going to be talking to you. That's Major Zero. With a big gnarly scar down his face. Hit your zero. Presumably the um the the whole com thing. I forgot the name of it now. Codex. 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 Codex still in this, is it? It is, but it's called something else. It's oh. just a radio. <laughs> <laughs> you still see their faces, but it sort of has a picture of Snake, with, like sort of crouching down in the background with a radio. You doing box. this? Jack, I've got yeah, basically, yeah. Head of the CIA has finally given us the green light for the virtuous mission. Virtuous mission. Good to hear. Virtuous mission. No, he said virtual. He replied with virtual. But he still does the same thing as Solid Snake, where he just repeats what the other guys said. But with an upward inflection, so it's a question. Well. Virtual isn't a very 1964 word, is it? A certain Soviet scientist no, but it's virtuous. It's not the virtual, so... Yeah. Malt. His name is Nikolai Stepanovich Sokolov. He's head of the OKB754 Design Bureau, one of the Soviet's top-secret weapon research facilities. And the East's Get a monocle. expert on weapons Yes. Uh, that's... Nikolai. He's just tossing a coin, but the picture was taken at really an opportune <laughs> moment. <laughs> <laughs> God, I wish that was the case. <laughs> man space in history. The Earth was blue, but there was no God. Well spoken. Yep. The rocket that carried Yuri Gagarin to orbit. That's exactly what I would have said. Known as the Vostok rocket. Sokolov is said to be the man most responsible for the multi-engine cluster used in that rocket. After One thing I can't. So, uh, we we were talking about um, Diablo three previous before this. One yeah. thing I can say about Diablo 3's story, and it just made me think when we start to watch this again, it it tells you everything very concisely. All of the side conversations are quite short. It's all palatable and all you know. It's it's scripted there's, very well. There's not a lot of fat on there, is there? So yeah. Just the information you need to know with not a lot extra. But it's also ridiculously easy. Yeah, I, I yeah, I'm. I said I'm getting the same as well. It's. I think I might have died once all the way through the game. No, hang on. No, I haven't I died, died at all. all. It was only slightly a challenge up to about level twelve, level thirteen. Ever since then, I've just it's just been. A Until, as soon as I got my first skill, I was fine. <laughs> whenever that was, um, hardly lose any health. It's. Oh, great. The subtitles and stuff that are appearing on my screen are way behind what the what they're saying. Yeah. Is that the same for you guys? I'm guessing Chris has got yeah, it all the same. Yeah, the sound but... sounds out in sync, but I don't think. Yeah. So. Uh, Is that too much of a problem? Nah, I don't think so. Just can't do anything about it now. I'm sorry. Once the gameplay well, the starts. Didn't back down, instead placing their armed forces on secondary alert. Soviet just a heads up if we say something that seems really out of time for the game. Right then, I'll uh, I'll just do a reset on the uh, screen, see if that helps. Frantic negotiations were conducted through the UN's Emergency Security Council and unofficial channels to end the hair trigger standoff. Finally, on October looks real people. The Soviet Union agreed to remove its real stock footage. Yeah. So the world avoided a nuclear holocaust. But in order to get the Soviets to pull their missiles out... So here's a bit of the alternate Metal Gear history. So they're saying that the reason um, for the Cuban Missile Crisis being resolved the way that it was um, is 
slightly different than what official history says it was, I believe. And Sokolov is tied into it. I can't remember exactly how. That's fixed the sound, by the way, Chris. So what did the Russian Tough. I've uh, just done something else because you were too late telling me. <laughs> I was too late telling you because it was lagging. All right, we should be back. Right. What the hell was he working on? Is that all right? It's a bit better. Yeah, I think it's about there now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it seems about right. We were running out yeah, it's close enough. Either give up Sokolov or risk full-scale nuclear. Yeah, so there's the reason that the Cuban Missile Crisis was worked out because there was a deal to make a trade of Sokolov, who had defected to the United States, but the Ruskies wanted him back because he's working on something. And what he's working on, well, it's not really a spoiler to say, given that the game's called Metal Gear Solid 3, <laughs> was the precursor idea to Metal Gear. It's not Metal Gear in this game. It's a different kind of machine, but it is still a massive machine of destruction. <laughs> so you're saying that, that from the 1960s they've been making these shitty things that get destroyed by a single human being running around the feet of them? Yes and no, it's not a Metal Gear, but it's just kind of like a Metal Gear, yeah. So what kind yeah. Of is it? Something to do with it's not a walking tank they, in this They need, one, a, no, they need a better idea. Same technology. Because these, these giant robots just right. aren't cutting the mustard, really. They're not, and they do, uh, by Metal Gear Solid 4, they're not making the giant robots anymore. It, it's become different, so. They do finally learn by, what year is Metal Gear Solid 4 set in? I think it's set in 2000 and, I think it's maybe set in 2014. It might be set this year, Metal Gear Solid 4. Right. So it's okay, 50 right. years to realise. Yeah. It's about right for a government agency, isn't it? About three miles to the west, as well as the Virgin Cliffs. The Virgin Cliffs. Virgin Cliffs. Nice That's what he just said. They moved him there just recently. Why? <laughs> Apparently, they're conducting a tell all. Why else? Who <laughs> <laughs> never tell all? This mission has never been possible. <laughs> yeah, to tell everything. <laughs> <laughs> this is our last chance. Sokolov must have known that too when he contacted us. So rather unsurprisingly, the mission is to drop in there and get him big. This is almost the plot to Predator so far. There are no... Uh... Uh, camouflaging aliens in this game. Well, no, there wasn't in Predator until he appeared. No. <laughs> yeah, I, don't think, I don't think you see the Predator until halfway through, do you? No, you see it from first person. Chris, here's something. What? Thank you. Sorry. I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't hear the other guys. <laughs> in the game boy, you get to kind of be loud when you don't comment on anything for a while. <laughs> Weird how it works. Yeah, so as you might have seen there, in that cutscene, there was an R1 prompt. If you press, press that, it puts you in first person mode. That does actually have some story uh, implications, so you kind of want to do that when that prompt comes up. Did you notice it, Chris? Yeah, I did. I, well, no, I didn't, but I knew it was there. Yeah. It's only a couple of cutscenes in the game where there's a, there's a reason to do first person mode. You get a new angle, and you can see something that's helpful to you. That's all I'm going to say about that. Oh, landed on Mickey Mouse. The Fulton Surface Air Recovery System. I'm familiar with the theory. Take it easy. It's been combat proof. Do you think the old Fulton Recovery System? The shock will be less than Making a reappearance in Phantom Pain, I believe. Yeah, basically, if you don't know what that is, uh, you've all seen The Dark Knight, I assume, yeah? Yeah. You know that skyhook thing that he uses to get that bloke out of uh, Hong Kong? Mm -hmm. It's basically that. Right. That's the I didn't understand that part of the movie at all. It <laughs> attaches a, a balloon, which an aeroplane picks up. Yeah, he did the, the standard Christopher Nolan thing of, of just at the start of the third act, making everything really completely confusing. Really? The dark, I don't think the Dark Knight's confusing at all. I think that part of it is. And also, that's nowhere near the third act. The third, and that's at the end of the first act. The bit where he just the, goes to the Hong Kong, that's like the first third of the film. That's an early part of the film. That's before the oh, Joker wow. does anything. Anyway, not Yeah, that's you after. told, Lou. Nothing yeah. to do with this. I've seen the Dark Knight a few times, so I kind of know the structure of it. 
Tree, tree, tree. Trees, 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 parachute. Ouch. All this stuff was in that bag. Stag, nab it. Oh, does this mean you don't start with any equipment? Uh, you, you only have to... You never do. First things to go, your first That's thing is mean. to go and get the equipment, though, so it's like you get your equipment fairly quickly. And actually, you started with equipment in Metal Gear Solid 2, you had a tranquilizer right from the start of the game. Remember? In uh, the second chapter, anyway. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Look at the view. Ah! He threw that away with a level of contempt there. Stupid breathing apparatus, I don't need that. Behold my beautiful face. <laughs> my beautiful turbo mullet. Yeah. The mullet of inescapable destiny. Again, looks that, looks that, quite a lot that better. A, that was a TV intro head turn, that wasn't it? It was, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it was like, it was like da 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 <laughs> It really was like one of those. Maybe that's the point, though. Yeah, maybe, it kind of feels like an 80s version of the 60s, doesn't it? It's a little, yeah, that's actually territory. quite a good way of looking Some at it. It's a, it's a sort of 80s, 60s on out, we'll be using code names thing to refer going to each on. Other. Your code name for this mission will be Naked Snake. So at least in this one, there's no talking heads because it's a radio. It was a radio in the other games as well, but in this you just got little pictures. Don't like snakes? What do you mean? It's like high-tech, low-tech, this game, which I quite like. I'm glad to hear that. I don't know if I'd ever order one at a restaurant, but... Be careful, you might not have a choice. What about you, Major? What should I call you? Earth plays Hexa. How about Major? I'll be Tom. Yeah. Major Tom. Major Tom! <laughs> God. In some David Bowie references, jumping in. You must leave no trace of your presence. I know that in Metal Gear Solid kind of uh, 5, the, the unit that unit Snake creates is called the Diamond Dogs words, unit. So that's another David Bowie reference right there. That goes for food as well. You're completely naked, just as your name is. Uh, Kojima a David Bowie fan? Now I see he is, yeah. He's an American culture fan in general. I know David Bowie's English, but. I suppose yeah, he's David Bowie's Western not, culture, not. then, sorry. He was part of that whole kind of uh, 80s revelation in America, though, wasn't he? David yeah, Bowie yeah. was very heavily involved in that. You've been issued a knife and a tranquilizer gun. Use them to hunt not food. totally naked then. We'll also find some medical supplies in your yeah, they're kind of not naked. Yeah, about the back. The almost naked snake. The page three the snake. Down. <laughs> FHM snake. Well, you better go back and get it then. You know where it is? No problem. I can see it from here. It's oh, I can actually move it around on the, the background as well. Yeah, yeah. To climb a tree. Well, then it really does anything, but a tree yeah. that's covered in ivy and press the action button. I'll be monitoring your progress over the radio. We can't risk violating... So what I remember, there actually aren't that many massively long codec calls in this game compared to Metal Gear Solid 2. There are still quite a lot of cutscenes, but at least the cutscenes are more... To be fair, we've got, into, we've got into it pretty quickly, so... Okay, Snake. Go get your backpack. Yay, gameplay time! Amazing. This so, is. you should have, you should have, hopefully, third-person camera control straight away. Mm. Oh, not? look at that! Look at that! I think I'm going to have to invert it, though. Yeah, so maybe getting your go. options. So that's going to make this game, in some ways, a hell of a lot easier. I'll uh, be back in a minute. Yep. No worries. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, but you'll notice quickly, uh, Lou, as, as this is the first time seeing this game, there's no radar. No Soliton radar was invented. You have what at the top right there, you see a camo index. 10% now means he's got 10% camouflage. Splitter is his face camo that he's got on, and Olive Drab is his outfit. Now, if you see and that. that light, yeah, he's lying down in the grass. Uh, he's got 80%. And also, the opacity of the image increases the little square. Oh. So there, it's like fully opaque. Oh! <laughs> Fuck me! Chris! Snake is dead! What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't actually fastest, think there was a cliff there. Star, you really cool. ever. Not okay, sorry, three so far. Fastest first death ever possible. Literally ran off the bloody cliff. <laughs> Did it on purpose. I like the, the game allows you to do that though. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't I mean, know, that would not happen in any modern game. It wouldn't. And to be fair, the cutscene showed him stood on the edge of a cliff. Like, oh, at the whatever. Very start. 
So you knew it was there. All right. Anyways. Um, again, the the controls feel nicer already. Again. Yeah, this game is uh, apart from Metal Gear Solid Four, has got really like it's quite. Again, for the PS2 as well, this game was incredible because look at the level of detail mm -hmm. in your environment. It's actually quite immense. Like all the blades of grass and everything all move properly. Is this close to the end of the PS2's lifespan? This one? Um, yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, this was probably one of the last great PS2 games in that sense. Is that clear? But he, he's now he's a bit stroppy, wasn't he? Well, you tried to leave the area before you got it, didn't you? Oh, still. You orders, mate. Colonel Campbell went here now. You're back in the 60s, mate. It was hard. Military life was hard. Oh, what? If, <laughs> if you didn't get your, your military pack on time, you got seven across the ass. Back in the 60s. <laughs> yeah, gently does it. Give it a bit of a dangle. Bob's your uncle. Sorry about the cat noises, by the way. It's not on the game. It's the cat outside the door. I can't Meow hear it. Meowing at me okay. occasionally. Cat wants to be involved. I see can't you've retrieved it. your backpack, Snake. Or is your mate again now? A weapon <laughs> necessary to take it out of your backpack. In the survival viewer, choose weapon from the backpack. So this is the your the thing that you were keen on, Chris. This whole backpack camouflage from that in and out and in inventory thing. And press the enter button. It does make your but quick select um, a little bit easier because you don't have to have all your weapons guns. and your items all your time. You just have the few that you're using right now, yep, which is quite right. nice, I think. Suppose, yeah. Fundamental to this mission. Maybe that's a criticism of the previous the games. If you analyse it properly, we didn't actually use many weapons, did we, really? Ah, most of them you didn't need. You won't be able to shoot accurately, for example. You get a lot more weapons in this game. This game's got a much bigger inventory, but you Keep can select what you need and what you don't. Run out. You can also you choose to play this game more offensively. You can run and gun a bit more. Like, there's not endlessly spawning enemies in this game. If you keep killing guys, they'll stop coming eventually. My only weapon is a Mark 22. If you want to go that way. That's right. It's been fitted with its own suppressor. However, the suppressor will deteriorate every time you fire. Oh. Once it's Yay! Zero, Lose favourite thing. God. So don't get too trigger happy with it. The suppressor's durability. I'm gonna have to go and kill the cat. Any weapons and equipment? I love my cats, by the way. We can't hear it. I have to yeah, he can't. Distracted him. Equipment. Whose crazy idea was this anyway? Solo covert action. <laughs> Standard pop operating procedure. Can't leave any traces of your presence. What? No weapons, equipment, Did, footprints, what happens? Sweat, he just he walked to the door and like the cat just disappeared. He saw me, I went to pick him up. I was gonna bring him in and show everyone, but uh he ran off. Camera shy. There aren't supposed to be any It's because uh because mummy's in the in the toilet, I think. He's upstairs waiting around for one of us. You can't <coughs> you're not one of them that like that you know or me i mean it's not your child it's a, it's a pet I, I give a fuck what you think yeah we call we call our cats well we call us mummy and daddy it's really weird we call us mummy and daddy i'm afraid so you've been given a fake death pill for that sis guidelines stipulate that soldiers on covert ops like this one issued a potassium cyanide capsule Tape it to your body. This so is you proper 60s, it isn't it? How generous. Yeah, man, there's a lot there's a lot of James Bond in this. In, in, in a good way. There's a gun pen in it as well. Isn't there a there's a cigarette so how do I tranquilizer that, that you've got like a it's a fake cigarette and you blow like sleep gas out of it and people would say before the mission. That's the one. You know the in that video that we watched, the um the hanky, is that does that actually knock people out? Is it chloroform or is it was that just a silly thing? Yeah. That pure? I'll keep it in mind. I believe it is, yeah. I can't remember it. You get it in one of the there's a lab there's a couple of laboratories and stuff later on and you get it in there. Because this game's got the be like the best environments like there's lots of outdoor and indoor environments, so it's got really good variety. I mean it's all jungle themed more or less. But... Yeah. Well we'll get there when we get there. This time survival is of utmost importance. The first member of the support team will be in charge of monitoring your physical condition, acting as a medic, so to speak, as well as recording your mission data. He's a member of Fox as well, and she's here on the gunship with me. She? Hello, Snake. I'm paramedic. Nice to meet you. Paramedic? As in a medic yeah. who comes in by parachute. Aren't you going to tell me your real name? Get it? Are you going to tell oh, me God. yours, Mr. Snake? My name, huh? It's Puntacular. John Doe. 
And they call you Jack for short. You're a regular Captain Nemo. A name means nothing on the battlefield. After all, uh. no one has a name. What's your name? Jane Doe. Very funny. Oh, God. I wasn't joking, but I'll tell you my name only if you manage to make it back alive. You were joking then, obviously. She's also in charge of recording your mission data. Whenever you want to save, send a message over the reserved save frequency. 140.96. So saving lets me record my mission data. That's right. It also records the state of your health. Good to know. There's one more person I want to introduce you to, Snake. Huh. Speaking of snakes, you remember the boss, don't you? A legendary soldier ah, the and your boss. mentor. Actually, it was the boss that got the DCI's authorization in the first place. She's going to be serving as Fox's mission advisor. The boss is? She also helped me plan this mission. She and I were at SAS together. Jack, is that you? How many years is it then? Boss? That's right. It's me. The boss. Talk to me. Let me hear your voice. She's awesome. It's been five years, <coughs> 72 days, and 18 hours. He knows exactly. You, wait. <laughs> you can tell just by the sound of my voice. What? Of course I can. I know all about you. Because she's that you know, goddamn good. Well, I don't know anything about you. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Why'd you disappear on me all of a sudden? I was on a top secret mission. God. <laughs> you didn't need me anymore. So the writing didn't get any better in these, <laughs> these games <laughs> then. No. no. I taught it's you never, you it's never gone to know so. about fighting. Let's with it. I, you I can't. I can't. Im <laughs> I can't imagine um, Kiefer Sutherland Ten reading these sure. lines. But what about how to think like a soldier? How to think like a soldier? I can't teach you that. Kiefer Sutherland isn't all that great, you know. Spirit, body, yeah, but he's, he's not a fantastic he's actor or anything like that. He's, he's not bad. In fact, I, I, not really I, I, would, I would put him in the lower than average category, I think. Spirit and body are like two sides Have you seen 24? Coin. The yeah, thing. it's a piece 20, of shit. I can't teach you how to think. You'll just have to 24. Think You're uh, I can't hear you, Steve. Watchable. Just because soldiers I agree. Are on the same side right now. What? In what? With who? Oh, shit. Yeah. I like the first series. You would do. Your it was right. all right, but then the it was like, it was really sort of, when you, you start to go, this is hour by hour, it got to be really stupid. And, and then, from what I've heard about the latest series, he basically just tortures everybody for everything. Fucking... <laughs> <laughs> And it's apparently it's become really ridiculously right wing, even to the point of not even hiding it anymore. I already told like, you, Jack. Everyone, I've who's, the everyone who's not Murican is bad and evil. The fucking, it just, I don't know, like, it, it didn't need a sequel series. One series would have been fine. Yeah, but obviously it made a lot of money, didn't it? So we had to make eight more. But you're not quite a soldier. Yeah. And uh, I think I think his daughter wasn't in it after the third series, so why the fuck would you watch it after that anyway? <laughs> so, what have I missed? Nothing. Uh, I, I fell off a cliff! <laughs> oh, you're dead. <laughs> yeah, Chris already died. Like, I, like, I got control for about two... I've done it once or twice, though, in the, in the series. I've got control for about two or three seconds, jumped off a cliff. Just because I was just seeing what the control... You know, what controls... I just rolled off a cliff. Sooner or later, your conscience is going to bother you. In the end... You have to choose whether you're going and to... Yeah, so this is... Uh, he's got introduced to his team. His uh, military advisor person is the boss who is his mentor, teacher. Person who he's not seen for years and they're just sort of talking some shit about missions and that. I follow the president and the top brass. I'm ready to die for them if necessary. The president and the Patriotism. top brass won't be there forever. Once their terms are up, others will take their place. I follow the will of the leader. No matter who's in charge. People are the ones who did So they're they're introducing us here America. to the sort of themes that are gonna run through the game. So she's challenging him and saying like and so do the leaders of a country. Uh, uh, so your leaders of who you fight for is is not gonna be there forever. You, you can't base your whole life and ideology terms, based on what leader you're fighting for right now and as blah blah blah. We have loyalty to the end. There's no point in believing in anything. Even in those we love. She and I that's the way a soldier's supposed to think. Um, not really. You kind of get that impression of her, but she's... I don't know. You can't really right. talk about the boss without spoiling stuff. What is it? I know you're probably not bothered. <laughs> I'm not going to do it anyway. All right. Your code name is Snake. 
They're rubbish, aren't they, at this secret core deck of malarkey. put together during World War II was a snake, the Cobra unit. A group of heroes that brought the war to an end and said... That's what they're called, the Cobra unit. Legendary hero. I couldn't remember what the unit was called in this game. Isn't that right, Snake? All right, so those are the going to be the bad guys, are that? Yeah, they're quite... I mean, they're not, like, massive... Again, they're not massively in-depth, but they've all got a good theme to each one of them that's really quite solid and cool. Is the Cobra thing a bit of a... After all, has that got anything to do with the British government? Snake? Um, one of the people in the Cobra unit are British, so I don't know if that has any bearing. No, I don't think so. Possibly. There's loads of references to shit like that in Metal Gear all the time, so I can't even catch them all. I don't get the reference, Steve. What, what? Uh, the secret defence units of the government called Cobra. All right. So whenever they're meeting about terrorist attacks or discussing what to do for national security, it's Cobra that convenes. I'll be supporting you over is this going to do with the A.E. Yeah. Stallone movie? Possibly. <laughs> Don't think so. That film's pretty bad, isn't it? I've never seen so it. So's the game. The game. My frequency is yeah. <laughs> the game's quite widely um, loved. It's like it's, it's like a. It's still bad though. I played it. I don't see what the fuss is about. In an abandoned factory located to the north yeah. of your current position. Again, yeah, it's another one I probably got about two or three levels into. Don't forget that this is a stealth mission. Yep, Chris, right, stealth. stealth. You don't kick the shit out of a hundred thousand people in the same corridors, Chris. I predict that, well, like everyone has an adjustment thing with this game. Not having a, ra you've got full camera control, yeah, but you don't have a radar. It is gonna, you are gonna come a cropper with it a little bit. Everybody does. It's just, yeah. We're just going to watch three hours of Chris Commencing punching and kicking people in the corridor, aren't we? <sighs> no, because there's not as many corridors. This is quite <laughs> a lot more open. You're going to watch him punching and kicking guys in grass near trees. <laughs> 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 and probably getting shot quite a lot as well. I can't remember if you can bring up your map as well. Um, as an overlay of the screen, it might be select. And you can start to find animals and stuff in the wild and kill them and eat them. Because you, you, I don't know if you've talked to you about this yet. Yep. It just evaporated. Turned into a ration. You can tranquilize them and capture them alive as well. Then you can throw snakes at guards, which is quite cool. <laughs> and they go, and get the snake. Spiders in, in the hair. <laughs> yes. You can, well, you can throw snakes and spiders at them and then they'll like bite them and the guards will get poisoned. And yeah, all kinds of new mechanics are chucked in. Like the wildlife in this game is really cool. There's a lot of it. There's a bit high variety of animals and things. That's it. Game's complete. Hey. <laughs> this is actually this this automatically feels infinitely better. Like again, it's it's. It's hard to explain the difference between all the control systems. This just feels a lot more responsive. I mean, it's actually analog for... Oh, no, it's not. It's not fully analog. No, it's, it's still, not, it's still, still not walk and run. It's still, I remember this game's controls feel a lot more... They feel a lot more uh, chunky and, and deliberate, whereas Metal Gear Solid 2 is better, but it's still quite floaty. If that makes sense. I, can't, I don't know if that's... If people get what I'm talking about when I say shit like that, but... I don't know what you mean. Is it, you feel a bit more in control of Snake in this game than you did of riding in the other one. Yeah, I did. In, when I was watching the combat in, in the, the kind of close alligators. Combat. Oh what, shit! What size of that fucker? Shit! I didn't even. I forgot that they even were in the game. Yeah. Um, they, well, they're not the crocodile things, aren't they? What are they called? Um, crocodiles. Begins with a K, doesn't it? Caiman. Caiman. No, it's a, K, it's a C, not a K. They're those things. You do have to go past this se this section, but you can uh, tranquilize them, I think. Or just avoid them. Or roll over them. Oh, shit. They're camouflage too. <laughs> it's not the right one, sorry. I'll do that a few times. Woodland. So as you'll see there, your woodland <laughs> camo. Yeah! <laughs> Represent! <laughs> There's how you can camouflage yourself in a UKIP crowd. <laughs> <laughs> the, 
<laughs> These aren't camels. They what? are. Did he sit in the Did he sit in the jungle like you're drawing a flag <laughs> on his face? This uh, this That's game... not really PC, is it? I was gonna say this game was made in the in the beautiful days before <laughs> UKIP existed. That's like that's like proper decent tan. That look at him. How to keep that not, on? He looks ill. He's got a white neck. So you go. You get you get better. Um, you know, depending on your camo, but you have to go into the menus to it. But everywhere you are, you have different. Now, like, does so it actually make a difference to the game? Oh yeah, big yeah, difference. Look at the top right. Camo index. All oh, right. Now, Chris, what I remember, your basic best camo for running around the forest is tiger stripe in general. That's the one I usually would leave on most of the time. I mean, for now, you don't really need any, but um, yeah. You can also go naked, which is topless. You can run around with your top off and shoot dudes. Is that a beehive you just shot there? It is. God, it's really weird. It's like the cap having control of the camera, I keep forgetting. <laughs> I think if you probably do that thing where if you click the right analog stick, it probably goes behind you. I don't know if that's in this game. It's in most games, isn't it? Oh no! When you click the right analog stick, you can do that. Oh, that's pretty cool. I guess. So that's a set camera angle for the particular level. That's probably what the old... Because this game didn't originally have third-person camera in it, so doing that probably puts the old camera view on. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, that's interesting. I think. You can move it, kind of. It zooms out a little bit as you move the stick around. It's a very detailed game for a PS2, isn't it? Really it's detailed. Beautiful. Yeah. HD well, it's better, HD, but remember, but yeah. All the textures were already there, though. This is just making them clearer. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, it, it still... You know, looks better than some PS3 games, to be honest. Mm. Uh, so you, you'll see on his health bar as well, there's a, a main health bar, which is just a big, thick white one. And then there's a small one underneath it, broken up into four chunks. That's his uh, stamina. <laughs> so you need, that's why you need to eat in this game, because his, his stamina will go down. Looks and the like... more stuff he's got equipped, his stamina will go down faster and all that kind of shit. What happens when your stamina runs out? You just you just crap like you're not very, you, you, your attacks aren't very powerful your your weapon aim is terrible like you don't die but I think yeah if stamina gets all the way to zero I think it starts yeah. to your health as well yeah and you walk really slow as well yeah um he looks he looks like someone out of Towie at the moment he does look a bit manicured doesn't he <clears throat> well it's because of his Perfect beard as well brown is that because of the fake tan you've got on him. <laughs> 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 Still looks more healthy than people in Taui. <laughs> is that is that a decent Amer English accent? I think that's an English guy. Yeah, that's a, that's a proper English accent. That. What? Yes, cursed twins. Bit, a bit, bit better than that. <laughs> the success of the mission depends on how well you use your camouflage. Change your camouflage Told. by selecting camouflage from the survival viewer. The That's what we just did. option lets you pick your uniform, while the face option lets you change This is a bugbear having games. Choosing games that give you the tutorial after the it's clearly obvious that you've you done something You already know yeah. what's going on. Also, don't forget that anything that moves will stand out in the jungle. If you just stand up and run around like an idiot, you're bound to be spotted. But if Chris. you crawl instead, you should be able to sneak by without being noticed. There's a lot of crawling in this game, crawling through grass. I do remember that. You can see how effective your camouflage is by looking at the camo index. The camo index shows how well your current camouflage blends in with the surrounding area. Can I skip this? Because I've just the done all this. Value, yeah, just yeah. skip it. It's, it's, just, it's just stuff I just told you, so get past it. Oh well, that was the last line anyway. So yeah, you obviously you change your camo. If you go to a you know a brick area, you put on red camo. If you go to a forest area, you put on green camo. Pretty self-explanatory stuff. And I don't think there are any guards around just yet for you to be concerned there is. about. There is around this corner. Oh yeah, just ahead where she was pointing. Oh, there's one. So he'll probably come over there, and you can maybe get a bit of a trank on him. Ah, uh, maybe not. We got a trophy for that, apparently. Right? 
Now, I believe... Did it, I don't know if it says that on the AP sensor, but I believe that makes a noise so the guards can hear it if they're really close to you. That's interesting. Now, you can you can hold up guys in this one, and you can also interrogate them as well and get information. For example, um, sometimes they'll tell you things like, if there's an alert phase, they'll tell you a frequency of how to get rid of the alert phase. Shit. Oh, that went well. You can also see QC with your weapon equips as well. Oh, I just elbowed him. Oh, oh, nice. There you go. Another guy's calling it in, though. Just leave the area. The camera sticks when you're uh, backed up to summit. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> he cheated. He must have knew where you were straight away there. If you... Uh... Oh, I don't know. I'll let you put away from these guys first. Shit. Yep, they've seen you. Oh, oh bollocks. Oh! There you go, stab oh. rifle straight How away. How the hell did I get that? Did you just find it? There's lots of stuff dotted around here, I guess. Quite Maybe disorientating. What is having the camera control? Right, in the jungle, being in the jungle in general. Oh right, yeah. This is uh, this is the start as you mean to go on of this gameplay, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah. yeah. First area we've guarded it. Just leg it through, getting shot at. Easy. Uh, stealth. <laughs> it's good sneak in there. Well, for what it's worth, I feel like I'm watching a speed run now. Anyway. <laughs> speed no speedrunners don't get seen. All the Metal Gear speed runs are always no alert, no kill speed runs, aren't they? So they never get spotted and never kill anybody. Oh, I, that's the thing. I can actually watch some of them now. Now that I know what the game, what happens in the game. Yeah. I can appreciate the gameplay. Oh, I fucking remember doing this bit and being here for ages. Yeah, actually, if you... Oh, well, these guys are going to come right up to where you are, I think. Yeah, I know. Huh? Is that him? <laughs> I would guess that it is. Oh, dear. Oh my god. <laughs> this is gonna be good, isn't it? Oh god. If you were, um... <laughs> Why do we let Chris play these games? I don't know. Comedy value. Yeah, I, I, I'm not saying that I'm great at Metal Gear, but I do kind of want to just grab the controller and take over. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Evasion. Yeah, Chris, evade. Probably just stay there. It'll go away. I think you're Wrong in a good button spot. Again. Right? Yeah. His eyes could be the creeps. They look weird. Those baby blues. Just like too vivid. Oh, actually, I think your flectar is actually better than the tiger stripe, so never mind, take back what I said. It's alright, I never listened to you anyway. Indeed. So yeah, in this game, when you press circle, it'll do a punch. When you hold circle, it'll grab them. That's So you don't grab them using square in this game. You, it, all your hand-to-hand -hand stuff is done using circle or on one button, which is better, obviously. Um, so you, if you see a weapon there, we'll say CQC little icon. So the knife, the pistol has it. Sniper rifle doesn't. So one-handed weapons, you can CQC them, which means you can use this, you can use grapples and stuff 
whilst you've got that weapon equipped, which is quite handy for grabbing guys and all kinds of stuff. I can hear someone tapping away at a keyboard there. Yeah, it was me. How dare you multitask showing me <laughs> <you> through. <laughs> And now you've got a whole lot of seconds of caution. I don't think there are any guys on this side, so you might be able to make it over to this side of the bridge, possibly. Cold-blooded that man. Yeah, sorry. So not not a no-kill run. Didn't uh, say it was going to be. We didn't I agree did. that. I know we didn't. We certainly definitely know what we're doing now, don't we? Didn't need to say it. Actions speak louder than words. Oh and... god, get up! I love the music in this game. Good idea. Oh. Just punch the bridge to death, why don't you? No, no, I was I was cutting the ropes. <laughs> yeah. Just to also show. Was pun <laughs> also was pu punching the bridge to death. Uh, hang on. I've now disorientated. Which way do I need to go? Yeah, we'll stop. Just stop for a second and look. That way. <laughs> and I think running... Yeah, it's making you fall off the bridge. Oh my god. It's, it's, yeah. The bridge is tilted, so if you just keep legging it and cutting the ropes, it's going to be more tilted and unbalanced. It's Top nice that it's all like, it's a physical bridge then, so you can, it looks like it's responding quite realistically to the yeah. rope being cut. I don't think you nice can destroy the bridge entirely, but you can basically just fuck the balance of it up. Aid. And the. You're going to throw him off the cliff, are you? Into a watery grave. Oh, his legs are going. See you later, mate. Oh. Oh, look at that. Brutal. <laughs> <laughs> I'll always remember you, anonymous Russian soldier. <laughs> well, that was fun. I actually thought it would... Uh... It'd be a fail state if I got seen because it's a stealth mission. No, no. They're all stealth missions. Yeah. Well. Um, this is one of those games that there's loads of extra bits and exploring you can do in this game to find extra items and stuff. I can't remember where all of them are. So how much of that you do, Chris, is entirely up to you. I'm not going to say, oh, behind this tree there's a whatever because I don't remember where all the stuff is because there's so much. Just yeah, I'm just going to play it. I'm not going to like aim for anything in particular. You I'm just going to play you don't it. Need, you don't need all the extra shit. Like You don't need any of it. You can get through the game with the vanilla equipment. Scope. A few. Your objective, Sokolov, is inside the factory. They should be holding him in a, a lot of games with the name Sokolov in. It's like it's almost the go to yeah. name for Russians. Yeah. It just sounds very Our Russian, doesn't it? Sokolov back alive. Maybe it's a common surname like Smith or something. Kind of danger. Do not approach Sokolov while in the alert phase. Right. Oh, and one more thing, Snake. You mean there's more? No, it's of course. when you get to Sokolov, oh. I want you to tell him something from me. And that is? Sorry for being so late. Is that all? Oh. Yes. Understood. Beginning my approach to the target. I remember this bit. Can be a bit tricky because you yeah you've got to make sure you're not in alert state when you get to him. I think your best bet is to sneak through and not try and take. Well, you can try and take out. 
What I mean is you don't have to, you don't have to take out the guards to get to him. Is kind of what I meant. Not that he shouldn't sneak through, obviously. We've been giving Chris that advice for a long time now. Yeah. I'll do what the but... fuck I want, motherfucker. <laughs> you can you can just take them all out, and that'll also work. You can just That's kill them. That, that is what I would do, to be honest. My OCD would not allow me to go through a, a place and leave any guards still al alive or awake. Bear in mind that I am actually playing this quite different to how I normally would play it. You know, I'd, I would probably 100% everything. Like, even uh, if even if I died a million times doing it, I would 100% things. I don't really worry about dying in games these days, you know. I want to yeah, hold someone up and show is, you. That's a discussion for later. Is, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's maybe changing your game style a bit because you're more concerned about death. Whereas in Metal Gear, yeah, you can just die a lot and but get the, the stealth right. Right. You say if you got caught, you could let yourself die and start that section again, couldn't you? Whereas this is, you've got an incentive not to do that. Yes. So is there like a threshold on the um, the camouflage? Like, is it 90% now? If you, you can get 100%. You can get 100 for certain things in certain situations, but at the start of the game, you've got, you can, 90 is about the best you can get. Right. 95 when, is usually what, the best. When, watch, is pretty rare. when I duck, it'll go down when I stand up it goes down even further but at what point do the guards start to notice you um oh for fuck's sake you and, he hears you doesn't he yeah fuck off he will radio in a, a thing if you don't go and get him quickly there's another guy over there anyway so yeah, right. uh, you just have to take all these guys out there don't you Oh fuck's sake! So yeah, if you if you go to a guard and, and press circle as you're moving, he'll throw to the ground, which is a much more powerful attack than punching and kicking them. That's what I was trying to tell you earlier. That's that oh, will right. put them, that'll sometimes put them down and make them unconscious. If you hold it, you go to them, press ah. circle, and hold circle down like that. There you go. Mint. It's a very very handy move. You'll be using it a lot. Especially if you get getting seen. <laughs> See, I think, there you go, it pretty much puts them unconscious straight away, that move. <clears throat> right There's a lot of cool things like that in this, though, if I remember rightly. Yeah, yeah. It is a cracking. So right down there is where you want to go, but you have to be not in alert to get there. So maybe I remember, you can wait it out on the roof. I rem yeah, I'm going to say I remember doing it and just waiting on the roof until I went out of evasion. That'll work. After the after you get into that room and talk to Sokol, there's like a mandatory bit where you have to take out a bunch of guards before you can move on. But at this one, you don't have to take all these guys down. But when you come out of the room, you do. You have to fight the Ocelot unit. <gasps> Commanded by somebody. <laughs> So yeah, you'll notice that his camouflage, even though he's lying down, is only 35 because it doesn't match the colour of the environment that he's in. Yeah. Can you imagine how annoying it is changing it all the fucking time? I mean, generally you're in the woodland, so it's the, the sort of woodland camo is more or less the best. Damn it. Boom. Shit. Yeah. There's oh. a dude down there. Two dudes, no less. Oh god, I was stuck then. <laughs> These legs keep getting stuck on stuff. It's just like the last game it didn't get stuck at all. I can speak to him now though, can't I actually? That's some crazy torso work. There. He's just that, yeah. isn't he? It is, it is. I was just going to say, is that Chris is doing that. He's making it, he's going left to right quickly. All right. <laughs> That's him going oh, forward. Yeah, it's because it normally he crawls. He, could, he couldn't have done that, surely. Uh, I'm not sure if you can get in there in caution. I think you have to be totally clear. What was that you just threw there? Is that a grenade? 
That's not going to help things. What's wrong? The enemy is close by. Oh, God damn it. Yeah, the longer you keep doing loud stuff and killing people, the longer your caution face is going to Oh, no, I know that. Busy. No, it's because I couldn't get on the edge then. I was trying to... It's hard to stay ducked and uh, actually do anything. I think you can get... When you get to the edge, you'll do that. It'll go to the crap there. Just a crouch. You could probably um, drop down to that room and hide unless you just want to stay up on the roof, regardless. No, oh, someone's seen you. Yeah, so the guards aren't as stupid in this one. Even though you're on the roof, if they're down there and you stand up on the roof, they will spot you. This looks like the area in that video, although it could be that it's they all not. look like that. No, it's not. Okay. It's a similar color, pa similar uh, color palette to a lot of the areas. It isn't that one. There's a lot of areas that look roughly like this, but aren't like this. Oh, don't! Hey, actually, actually didn't mean nice. to do that then. <laughs> you might as well tranquilize it whilst you're there. Oh, I just wanted to kind of clear some uh, dudes out, so... Oh, bollocks. It's so hard to see them, isn't it? Well, yeah, because they're camouflage as well, and you don't have any... You don't have a, a radar, so you really have to be extra observant. Just dive behind those boxes. They'll probably throw a grenade in there. Yeah. Or do something. That would be a very a terrible bitch in the AI if hiding yeah, those boxes made you completely safe. Be a lot of this. Yeah. You can see Steve's enthralled. <laughs> you can maybe pop a trank into that guard's head. He's on the he's got the stars going round, but Zed's last longer than stars. Roger that being his head could be anywhere really. That's such a rotten thing. <laughs> Shoot someone in the head with a tranquilizer gun. <laughs> Massive die in the side of the red. Yep. Going into high alert. Acknowledged. The enemy is still nearby. Pursue. Oh, there you go. Oh. You, could, you could do it in cautious after all. <laughs> yeah, it said alert phase. That was all. Right, okay. I just happened to be in alert phase when I went near it last time. Yeah, I like to see every inch of a game when I'm playing it normally. You know. Mm, me too. Well, within reason. I must admit, I'm not. I'm also not playing it. I'm trying not to die. I'm trying to kind of show you all of the little bits, and that's why I'm dying because I'm kind of going a bit outside the boundaries of the linear story, you know. Hey, believe what you want. I'm a CIA agent. I do. I've come to escort you back to the other side of the Iron Curtain. Your CIA. Yeah. 60s leather jacket. Yep. The man who got you out two years ago. Zero. I have a message from him. So the, the thing, what they do in this game is everyone speaks English, even though they're Russian, but I'm pretty sure they explain it, or Sokolov says your Russian's great, so they kind of get around the whole different languages thing by saying, well, State can speak Russian, therefore so can we, so it all translates to English. Rather than bothering with different languages now. 
In Battle Gear Solid 5, they're actually going to have everyone speaking their real languages in the different places that you go. Uh, I don't think they're going to put subtitles on it instead, but that's just an interesting way of doing that. What were you going to say, Chris? Uh, I said I prefer it that way. I mean, obviously, being English and not and being ignorant and not speaking any other languages, it's makes more sense to us. I was playing um, Lifeless Planet, I think I told you guys about it a while back, and you read things in English, but there's a Russian voiceover whenever you pick a note up, and it's really difficult to, to read it while the Russian voice is talking, you know? I understand it if it was Russian, <laughs> it was written in Russian. Well, I wouldn't I understand me, it, but the, that's the point. The, the ideal situation for me, I'd, I'd rather they just had an accent. Mm. Like, I, I, I'll tell you what's really weird, if you've seen Enemy at the Gate... Yeah. Uh, they're all, they're all, they all have English accents in it. Like, uh, they don't even try and do, like, a, a, a standard English accent, like a received pronunciation. It's like got Bob Hoskins in it, I think. Just doing his Cockney accent. Well... I think the way they do it in that... Sorry. I think the way they do it in that is that the people that are, that are higher up in Russian, uh, you know, society have got posh accents, and the more working class ones have got basically cockney accents. Yeah, but it's just it works in that I thing. don't like that at all. It's completely jarring. It's like you at least want an accent so you can ground yourself in a different culture. I can't honestly say that it bothered me that much. It bothered me. Thing. It was really weird. Other, other people said that about that film, and I was like, really? Like, I didn't. I didn't mind. It's fine if it's in like some fantasy or historical thing where, like, you know, like Gladiator, where they've all got kind of a, a, a well-rounded English accent. It kind of makes sense then, but when it's when we, when it becomes regional accents or exaggerated accents, like like Cockney London accents, then it gets really weird. It just draws me out of the, the whole immersiveness of the where the story is meant to be set. Well, you'll be glad, I think, that... Yeah, these don't have Russian accents. <laughs> this is all just straight-up American voice actors. But they have done Russian accents. I mean, they did it with Olga in the last game, so it's weird that they yeah. changed that. They but haven't Olga done it with everyone. Speaking, Olga was speaking English to you, though. Yeah. Those Russian soldiers weren't speaking Russian. They were going Dawn, Shul. They were speaking English in a Russian accent. This is people. Sp the Snake is speaking Russian here, so it's all yeah. done in the same accent because it's not in English. Well, there you go. go. See, I was a little bit like when I first saw that. I was like, huh? Oh, all right. <laughs> so in a way, it kind of as long as they just go, look, everyone's just the language is Russian, but we're not going to bother doing that. So it's all in, in American. I can kind of get as long as everyone's on that same level, it's fine. Because there's no, I don't think there are any Russian accents in this game. Like, no I'm sure Volgin's Russian, you know. No, Volgin's just American accent. Hmm. When he could, when he turns up, you'll know. Bing. Oh yeah, so obviously he is. He just, you know, I don't think he appears till right at the end of the virtuous mission when he comes to be a big bell end. <laughs> See, Volgin is a bell end, but you're supposed to not like it. Like, he's not like a, a bell end because he's a shit character. He's actually supposed to be a twat. I had to kill them. There was no other way. But no one will know. Well, mm, there was several other ways. What about the boss? We lost contact with the boss some time ago. Obviously. What happened? So that's a context sensitive thing. If you don't Just kill people, say something else like, oh, I got by without anybody seeing me or whatever. I only killed one guard. I think you killed two, didn't you? I killed the one with the sniper rifle. Oh, no, that I killed another one with the sniper rifle as well, I think. Yeah. This is where the Ocelot unit shows up, I'm sure it is. Maybe not. I love that as well. What What's is that doing? supposed to be? <laughs> Hadouken? Yeah, yes. I know. It's, it's, like, it's like fighting stance. <laughs> oh, this is the way you fight the fast lot unit, obviously. Oh no! Oh, 
Yeah, he walked right into that one. Yeah. So this is the legendary boss. Oh no, here he is. Oh god. Oh, not again. No. Yeah, it's young. It's young Ocelot, man. Right, right one, right one. It's Yosselot. Yosselot. <laughs> oh, the perennial douche returns. I fucking hate him. I really hate this guy. He's like at least Ocelot has. Is it actually the same Ocelot? It's the same guy. Yeah. yeah. It's just him. He's younger man. But this one, this one has far more anime style affectations like his hand gestures and stuff that he does He's the and his man. silly hat <laughs> that's major ocelot to you don't you forget it <laughs> is that raiden's voice no, no it's not sounds very much like raiden josh keaton so josh keaton oh he's um he's i've seen that guy in quite a few things he's done quite a lot of uh, cartoon voiceover what I say seen, I've heard his voice in a little What the? As ever, Ocelot not on the side that he's supposed to be on. Trouble agent. Quadruple, septuple, at <laughs> four tuples. <laughs> Help! Leak skills. <laughs> Deflection. Remember? Because he did that in Metal Gear Solid 1, remember? Uh. He's fucking All spurs back. as well. Yeah, does man. Does he ever ride a horse? It does in the cutscene from Metal Gear Solid 5, which isn't even released yet. <laughs> so not until, like, the future does he ever ride a Do horse. Do you think he was wearing them all the time just in case he ever came across a horse? <laughs> He's wearing them all the time because he's a fucking dick. I can't say it feels good to kill a comrade. You can explain you a lot of Ocelot that way. <laughs> Sokolov, take cover. There is way too much anime gesturing going on. Yeah, that is. He's become an anime character, uh -huh. basically. I feel like he should have a floppier hairdo to be a more mm. villain. Or some spikes. Yeah, but he's got the spurs, I guess. That's yeah. sort, of, sort of almost there. They send it to a cat. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. Well, an ocelot is a kind of cat, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is, yeah. That's like an ocelot crawl. You just do there. What is that stance? That gun. They make a bit too much of fuss out of CQC, <laughs> don't they? Well, it kind of matters when it comes to the end if of the game. The so. boss, well, yeah. Then die. Ah. Dirt. There we go. There's some CQC for you. Owned. What a douche. He's like, the, he's like the uh, otacon of this game. <laughs> I was just going to say that. <laughs> I got there first. I was going to say it earlier, but I forgot his name in it. The, the Ocelot turned up and he got confused. That confused me. Pwned. He's pwning them all. Oh, he's grimacing at them now as well. And he killed two at once. Yeah, the, uh, <clears throat> the face I can't help but get the feeling that they're all wearing gimp masks. <laughs> <laughs> gimp masks with berets on top, yeah. <laughs> just to top it off. Regimental gimp mask. Uh, yeah, if that's what you want to think. Yeah. Well, they kind of look like they've got a seam at the back. Sorry, my cat was eating plastic. I think that's just a crease. Boned, boned again. It's pretty much the best he gets over Ocelot, isn't it, in this game? From the whole season series, apart from killing him, snake. of course. Yeah. Yes, snake just. Uh, well, this isn't, this isn't a snake that kills him, is it? Well, it's not. You know what I mean. He, apart him. from beating him in boss battles, I mean. Injected the first bullet by hand, didn't you? I see what you were trying to do, but 
that's testing a technique you've only heard about in the middle of battle wasn't very smart. You were asking to have your gun jam on you. Be yeah, serious. you idiot. I don't think you're cut the out for an automatic mistake. in the first place. You tend to twist your elbow to absorb the recoil. That's that's Chris's that's direction there, not the not the game. That's... Yeah, this yeah. is what Kojima decided to do with um, Metal Gear Solid Three <laughs> cutscenes. <laughs> Found footage. <laughs> Stop fighting back, Ocelot, you've lost. But that you brain. fancy shooting. <laughs> You're pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. <sighs> Save so much hassle, wouldn't it, if you just shot him now in the head? Uh, think about how much different the universe, the Metal Gear <laughs> universe, would be if he just went bang. Yeah, well, they basically the games wouldn't happen. No, otherwise. well, they couldn't, could they really? <laughs> Major, do you read me? I read you. Snake, are you all right? I've run into a few snags. These guys were after Sokolov, too. Apparently, they were taking orders from a Gru colonel named Volgan. A Gru colonel? Part of an internal Soviet power struggle, according to Sokolov. Something between the KGB and Gru between Khrushchev's supporters and Volgans. Sokolov was being guarded by the KGB and hunted by Gru? Snake, it sounds like this could be even hotter than Cuba. I, don't I wonder how much time they would save if they stopped repeating themselves. I agree. You like, hurry. stopped repeating, like... Himself, but I'll catch up to him. Sokolov. That's two seconds, isn't it? You know, the amount of time they'd save. Plus, it's the whole sentence is, it's like, he was being guarded by Gru agents. He was being guarded by Gru agents. Yes, motherfucker, just <laughs> said that. that. Yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> Whee! I don't think you can. If you try and kill him, it probably do a time paradox, which is when you die. It says time paradox. By the way, like when you press it, the game over screen, um, turns becomes time paradox. The letters change, which is just a nice little thing. So it doesn't do the um the, the Prince of Persia thing. That's not the way it happened. Yeah, no, it doesn't do that. It, well, it sort of does, but doesn't. It just has time for <laughs> us. I really like that that thing that they did in that game with this yeah. telling the story. I thought it was really cool. No, no, no. That's not what happened at all. It's like, as if he's telling the story and he's like, and then I ran along the wall and found some spikes. I mean, um, uh, got up over <laughs> to the other side of the thing. It's like, it doesn't really make any sense, but it's just a nice little touch anyway. Yeah, you can go under this house and there's rats in there, I think, and stuff. I'd already went under by the time you said that. You can stab the rats up a little bit. <laughs> Shanking some rats. You can stab hey. the snake. First person stabbing going on. <laughs> well, why did it do that? Um, just because it turns into a collectible thing, so it's just. What is that, Snake Hitch? I know that that's obviously there was some some kanji there that represented that much more succinctly, but. R is uh, rash. It means it's turned into a ration. I think I think they've all got R something on them. Yeah, so R is just like it's turned into a ration or whatever. Snake H is the type of H is the type of snake that it is. So there's. A letter ascribed to it, I guess, because there's obviously different types, like pythons, cobras, blah blah blah, all kinds of different animals. So I don't really know what part of Russia this is supposed to be, because like this is a jungle, and I don't think there's jungles that have this kind of wildlife in Russia. I'm not an expert or anything, but um, it's kind of a bit of a fantasy Russian. No, part. Russia, no part, no part of Russia is tropical. No. <laughs> ah, tasty. So some like I don't think rats taste very good. So obviously the tastier something is, the more stamina it recovers as well. But things also go off as well after over a certain amount of time. So yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. You have to start managing it later on in the game quite a lot. So it's a I'd say it's a, it's closer to an RPG this this game than than a lot of the others. It is actually, but you don't level up or anything. But you have to manage your items a bit more that way. Yeah. Yeah, the, the whole camel thing smacks of RPG as well. Mm. The way it has different percentages and stuff.
So you're basically going back the way you came. Oh. Do you have to get Sokolov off, or has he, has he just legged it off? He's legged it off, hasn't he? He ran away. So you're heading back to that rickety old bridge for some cutscenes, and that's the end of this prologue mission, I believe, after that. I seem to remember this taking longer the last time I played it. You come back there. When you, when you start the Snake Eater mission, you do come back through this area again the second time, and then, and then you fight the Cobra unit the second time. That's what I was thinking was going to happen. Technically, Snake fought the Cobra unit then, but it wasn't you controlling it. You okay? Those men were from the Ocelot unit, Spetsnaz. Yes. The best crew has to offer. <laughs> They're coming for Not good me. enough. I'm finished. Calm down. I'll get you out of does here. It, does it ever drop his monocle? Like in surprise. I can't remember if he does or not. It'd be a missed opportunity, wouldn't it, otherwise? That's the only reason God, I'd, I'd ever wear a monocle, just so that I could have it drop out. <gasps> and... So you could be surprised by something. Yeah. That's what they were making you build. Gadzooks! Yes. <laughs> the Shagohod. The treading Shagohod. 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 Capable of launching nuclear That's the Metal Gear in this game. Launch nuclear missiles from that kind of terrain. Oh, yes. Aye. And without support from friendly units. A nuclear-equipped tank capable of operating solo. Sounds like a great idea. Why don't we give it a big weakness on its back? <laughs> Why do we allow it to be would taken have... out by a soldier on foot? Would I have fought the Shagahod if I hadn't um, if I hadn't yeah. done Volgin? Yeah. Can't remember if I did or not. I'll tell you. You fight. You beat Volgin. Then you fight. But then Volgin goes, uh, gets angry, jumps in the shadow hole. Yeah, so I chases... didn't, I didn't kill him then. No, he chases you for a while on a bike, um, and then you fight the shadow hod. Then you get another sneaking section, and then you fight the boss at the end of the game. Right, so I'm right close to the end of the game then, aren't I? On my uh, PS2 yeah, save. Fight, yeah, fighting Volgin is you're near the end of the game, but there's still another bit of the game to go. Just got bored. Just got bored of trying to kill him. Well, you're on normal difficulty, so it should be. I think I'll put it on the hardest, whatever it is. I, I don't think it, European Extreme's available on the normal version. I don't think it is either. Not without completing it, anyway. Oh, stuff is about to happen. Yeah, I, I think I know what's happening here. He is very like Otacon, isn't he? He's just well, there's the, if, wimp, isn't wimp it? It's I a bit wear. of a Japanese trope, that though, isn't it? With the, always having a wimpy, yeah, person, the wimpy know, like, guy, yeah, wimpy intelligent guy that helps you out. Yeah, yeah. Does he? Does he, I was just watching the. If any of you guys seen Attack on Titan? Yeah, I watched it. Yeah, yeah the, the character Harmon is exactly that, the yeah. wimpy but smart guy who's always crying about stuff. <laughs> always freezing in panic at the same uh, first sign of trouble. Yeah, he does. Which I don't know how he gets into the like into being in yeah. the. Yeah. Uh, how can he be a scout? Yeah, it's like the scouts are the best of the best, and yet he cries yeah. at the first time he sees a titan. Let's yeah. his best mate get eaten alive. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, spoiler. He's all right though. He comes back. Good work. <laughs> Class attack on Titan. Even really bigger cool. spoiler. She's wearing a hell of a cob piece. Who is the boss? Yeah. Maybe she's got a dick. It's parachute stuff, it's webbing. Yeah, she's. she's... This looks like a massive cob piece. No, oh, it's webbing. Uh, oh, that's the. She that's emitted the... bees? No, that's the pain. All the, oh, the Cobra unit have, like, weird powers as well. <laughs> <laughs> the power of bees! <laughs> oh, look at that. That's the uh, that's the fear who's what? like a spidery type dude. Uh, so they've all got a name like the pain, the, the fear, the, the fury. Is it um, the sorrow? The the boss is called the joy. The knob. Um, <laughs> I quite like those names. Yeah, they're all named after an emotion. What they, the end? They, they, the they, end is an emotion. Idea. Well. Well, I hate having yeah. that ending emotion that I have occasionally. <laughs> Yeah, the end doesn't really fit into that, but the rest of them do. The sorrow. 
Well, the pain is more of a sensation, isn't it? So the they're so all named concept. after things. Yeah, the the something. Then, I guess. I have waited long it, that's been oh, well, already got an annoying voice. We will fight with you. I have a lot of games more. where the uh, where the antagonists are named after you know, like uh, the four government of the apocalypse, the force of the apocalypse. There he is. Yeah. Ooh, what, the what the hell? <laughs> is that? It's time we go to the depths of hell itself. Yeah, he sort of like hibernates, so he only sort of wakes up. He does weird things when he wakes up, like his eyes all boggly and. His eyes look like the uh, that it's scene from life. Total Recall. Total Recall, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case we didn't know what we were talking about, we did a really bad impression. Of it. <laughs> well, I was trying to get my eyes to pop out, but last time yeah. that happened, I couldn't see for a week. I don't have the visual. I just try to do the the sound, the Arnie sound. I like to think I'm still doing the actions, or even though you're not. I was, I was totally <laughs> You can't, you can't make those kind of noises and not like physically get into the, the part. I was absorbed in the role. Here he is. Morgan. Raiden. There is a reason as to why he's all electricy, and it's also to do with his big scars that he's got on him. Is it because he wears nylon, uh, oh, nylon underwear? Yeah, it's only when he's walking, it... notice. <laughs> <It's> friction. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and that's the secret. Oh. oh, a lot of anime gestures going on. No one, no one stands and says my unit and puts their fist out in front of them to emphasise that that's their unit. <laughs> um, Dolph Lundgren, that's who he is. Dolph Lund oh. Lundgren. I can I really struggle to pronounce his name. Just, just I just say Lundgren. It's a silent D. There you go, Lundgren. 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 Close enough, isn't it? Lundgren. Lundgren. Is that what you were going to say? Lundgren Underground. <laughs> Dolph Lundgren Underground. <laughs> I like that. It's like Gibbers. Ah, good old Gibbers. Well, he's old, but he's not that good. Give us, give us being Mel Gibson. Yes. Think you can pull the Aren't they like really heavy? Yeah, but he's a big, strong man. What the it's bridge? Got, it's got bridge made out of like balsa wood and cheese. <laughs> but anyway, this is uh, the boss totally pwning Snake and betraying him and turning to the Ruskies, the dirty, dirty Ruskies. Oh, I don't. Mate, it's not going to work out well for you, this. Oh! Oh! oh. Real. Pawned. Yeah, massively so. She does issue him a good few harsh beatdowns in this game. This is the first one. So I take it they must want him alive? No. 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 Obviously not. <laughs> they do not want him alive. At all. If Khrushchev finds out about this, we're finished. So Volgin is operating outside of the official Russian uh, lines. Hence yeah. him not being a, a character that appears in history at all. Wait. You know, because there's He's not real friend. guys like this in I'll history. Spoiler alert for people. <laughs> he might want to look into history. <laughs> this is in fact fiction. <laughs> By the way, people don't I emit don't... bees from the hands. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hitler could. Wasn't there a spoiler alert? What? Not spoiler. Wasn't there a disclaimer at the start of Metal Gear Solid 2 saying this game is fictional and stuff? And it's like, yeah, no <laughs> fucking shit. They do oh, that with oh, everything, though, don't they? The hand of trust. It is actually the hand of betrayal! <laughs> it's all the plexus elbow. Oh, the look of sadness. Of distrust. No! She's kind of strong, like. She just threw him off a bridge with one hand. No, but she threw a bridge into water. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> That's getting a bit arny there, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I never understand why people try and kill people by throwing them into water. Hey, if you hit, if you fall, hey, you can. This water, you'll it, die. It's like hitting concrete. Yeah. yeah. Because in real life, it would kill you. Oh, it just doesn't here. kill you in games or films. No, if, if you land right, you can I'm survive so a fall that high. I mean, look at high divers. Yeah, but the way he fell there, he would have died. Yeah, but there's a chance. If she would have just shot him through the head, well, he would yeah. definitely be dead. That is true. The, yeah. The, yeah, okay, there's a, there's, there may be a reason for this, though. This is Metal Gear. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why I said, do they want him alive? Then? Well, no, Plus, they don't. Um, so that's where they should have killed him. The whole bandana thing comes from her. He grabbed her bandana as he fell in, and then it, when the mission starts, he's wearing that bandana. And all the snakes after him wear a bandana for some reason. Is it the same bandana? <laughs> no, I don't think so. It's not a banana, mate. It's a bandana. <laughs> Screw you, hippie. Ah, oh, this is where you get introduced to the, the healing mechanic that you've got to do on yourself as well, because you're all been messed up, all broken bones and stuff. <laughs> is it like Mr. Yeah. Miyagi healing? Oh. Yes, and... Oh. That's exactly what it is. <clears throat> Sweet. He's also changed his code name to Danielson. <laughs> that was the arm that she just snapped. I'm sure it was. Was it that arm? Well, Snake, this is right. Can you hear huh? me? Well, he's using the other arm on the codex, so. Just barely. Snake. Oh right, Listen yeah. So either or. Medical treatment. Can you move? Kojima. You've got <sighs> those wounds treated. Hang in there. All right, let's get you fixed up. Paramedic. Okay, Snake. Just relax, and it'll all be over before you know it. Stay with me. I've seen people in worse shape before. Think you can handle it? Major. The boss. She's defected. We'll talk about that later. First, we've got to get you patched up. Okay, here we go. First, open the survival viewer with the start button. If you select cure, you can start the treatment. Healing is divided into treatment using medicine with the item window button. And surgical treatment using the weapon window button. This is proper the RPG stuff, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Elbow and rib bone. And it's kind of a cool idea, but it, it's a bit laborious as well. It, 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 it's only in this game, treatment. never comes back in the others. See, it, it, it kind of doesn't really seem to sit very well with a more of like an action y game, does it? Once you've selected the affected area, hold the weapon Still not really an action game, though. You're very slow, you know? And it's hard yeah. to aim, it's not. But so was Lone Soldier. So was what, sorry? <laughs> Lone Soldier. Isn't that that infamously terrible PS1 game? The one that I bought, full price. Despite oh, yeah, yeah. Warnings against doing so. Because you thought it looked good in, in the look picture good. or something. If you do everything I mentioned, the wound should heal completely. Understood. What did you mention? Because we just talked yeah. over it. Just, uh, I, I got it. Pretty, Sorry. You just select the, the view wounds. and it tells you what to heal it with. It's pretty I was just going to say, I think it's automatic. Yeah, it's kind of. You can't use the wrong stuff anyway. Cut him. Uh. <laughs> can't get up, can't move. Let me just. Uh, let me just uh, catch my breath for a moment here. Uh. <laughs> So, yeah, what is it? R2 is your bandages and L2 is your medicine? Ointment. You have to do it in the right order. So for a for a, a cut, you've got to stitch it, then or you've got to disinfect it, then stitch it, and then bandage it or something like that. It's a surgeon simulator now. Well, maybe it doesn't have to be in the right order. You can just do it in any no order. No bandage. But there's like, four, there's like three or four steps to each injury. Do you get injured? Oh. That's it. Broken arm, sorted. Yeah. Splint and a bandage. <laughs> Done. Yeah, you do get injured quite often. Well, you get injured quite often depending on how you play the game, yeah. Oh, I mean, is I it cutscene injuries? Yeah, like cutscene stuff like it's just happened. Um, there's w at least one more instance of that, I believe. There's another fight with the boss where you don't really have a cutscene injury from it. There's one more bit quite later on in the game where you do have to do a bit of it, that. But this is obviously just to like get you introduced to the mechanic. Bone fracture. Ribs. I think you can just put a bandage on it, can't you? It's fixed. Bandage. Yeah. I see. I've broken ribs before. And you can't fix them. No, there's nothing you can do really, is there? Other than try not to move yeah. very much. Is it really painful having a broken rib? I bet it's pretty unpleasant. One of the, one of the most painful things, isn't it? 
Because every time you breathe, surely it would just hurt. Yeah. I Which, you know. Three around the back, and I broke four around my uh, chest, like chest plate. In the same go? No, no, different occasions. Shit, dickhead. What were the occasions then? I'm interested. Um, the one on the back was a drunken incident. I fell onto something very pointy and hard. Ooh. Um, the one on the front, I was playing football in, um, you know, like these seven aside pitches that are surrounded by a steel cage. Yeah. <laughs> I spun into one of them all. Another guy spinning the ball, but he got there first and kind of stopped and put his arm on the wall, and I ran the back of his elbow full speed. Oh. Uh, Stern oh, just like Snake out. there, we're all a bit winded. <laughs> Ouch. He looks pretty messed up, to be honest. He's pretty fucked up. Back to it in a minute, though. We reap. I think there is a ridiculously quick recovery time, because the second you get like lifted out, and then you go back onto another mission, it's like a week later, it's like, mate, he broke his arm. Like He's not going to be out doing a mission. With a broken arm. That's why he's the best soldier in the world. Ridiculous! He's like he's got. I don't think he is though. Like, but, well, the boss is. Well, he obviously point. isn't. Yeah, the boss has just kicked his ass. Yeah, the boss is at this time the best. I'm he's already in more invested. I'm already more invested and interested in this one than the second one by far. We're coming to get you now. Just it's a bit more straightforward. You, you've already. I mean, the, the codec calls are a bit lengthy, but they've already set up that the boss is important to you. They've talked about what it means to be a soldier, and then she's betrayed him. So you get, there's a bit more of a character, like, emotional motivation straight away, other than just, like, the colonel's being a bit weird. Oh, who's this solid snake-looking guy? Fortune's a knobhead. Like, yeah, you get into it. This has got a more emotional story anyway, the whole sort of snake and the boss dynamic that runs through the game. They're just going to drop this on Snake. That. Yep, right on his face. If it's so cool, why does it need to be by helicopters? Because it's 1960, duh. 1950 something, isn't it, actually? I think it's 1964, oh. this is set. Oh, reaching out to touch him. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry to betray you. Don't worry, I forgive you, sort of. What's he doing? Why would you do that? Because it was a there was a moment in time where they were both thinking about each other or something. I don't know. Silly story stuff. <laughs> Somewhere out there. <laughs> don't know the rest of the words. Or the tune, in fact. <laughs> totally forgotten how the tune goes. I know it goes high pitch like I just did, but obviously in tune. Fival, what a name. They were Ruskies, weren't they, in that film? Fival Goes West, they were him and his family were Russian, weren't they? I'm not sure. Wasn't it American Tale? Yeah, but it's about the Russian mice going to America, yeah. Oh, was that the subtitle, Fival Goes West? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, was that the second one? Did they have well, a second, the second one? one. That was the second one, there was two. But it's, it's called an American tale, though. They're both yeah, called an American tale. Yeah, but don't tale. they move from Russia to America because there's no cats in America? <laughs> and the streets are made of cheese. Yeah, Some like rubbish like that, isn't it? Yeah. That, I remember that the streets in America are made of croissants. Oh, no, sorry, that's um, Team that's America the, in that's France, America. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, in France, the actual the, the streets of Paris are made of croissants. That was an amazing <laughs> little detail. I loved that when I saw I, it. I love, I love noticing that. <laughs> I love that whole film, to be honest. It's disguised to get in that place. I still think about it every time I see someone with a shit beard. I always think of that guy with his fucking stuff stuck on his face. Kaka laka, durka durka. <laughs> oh, here she is. Hey. The love interest. Not so fast, my dear. She looks like Quistus from. Final Fantasy VIII. Mm, does quite a bit, yeah. Quistus. Oh, what a name. Don't all the Final Fantasy characters kind of look like girls, <laughs> apart from Barrett? Actually, Quistus is a girl. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right, okay. Thought Quistus might be the male. You know what confused me about that game? They had Quistus and then they had the, the summon that began with Q as well, that was Q U something. Quintos? Twi Quintox or something? Quistess? Just slightly different. <laughs> I can't remember. 
There weren't summons anywhere, sure. there were junctions, weren't there? We no, there were oh, summons. Oh, whatever. Oh, yeah, it was the junction system. I, I don't remember, I just remember some of that game. I remember what's her name's introduction, not Quistis, the other girl. Selfie. Minoa. Selfie, is that her name? Selfie's the one with the, the, the hair like that. Yeah, and yeah. There's Minoa, which is. No, the, it's Selfie, where well, she comes off the rocks and falls over with a. Weird so leg thing. On, yeah. Yeah, 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 that yeah. as well. So, yeah, he's <laughs> nuking his own country there, like a total douche. Tactical new. As he just said, he's going to blame it on the boss, as the, he's going to blame it on the American defectors, so the boss gets blamed for this. What's about to happen here? Boom! That's out of time, because I'm two seconds behind, but whatever. Oh, they do, do make a point that he's uh, that after this he's sterile. Like the the, <laughs> the sperm that Solid Snake and whatnot are made out of was taken from him before this happened. Because that was a big thing back then, wasn't it? Did you just visit visit the sperm bank before he came out on a mission. Just I'm pretty case. sure they. I'm pretty sure that they probably made him donate his sperm or something else. Right. Stole let's, his tissues. Let's not argue about the politics surrounding it or the uh, the moral this isn't the morals. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the end of the virtuous mission. So I think once I think it starts it... up the next one, I think it might be the, the the theme tune. But is that a good place to stop the first episode? I think stop it here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think we stop it. Already one death hours. as well, mate. Well done. Yeah, one death falling off a cliff. Accidental <laughs> death as well. Ridiculous death. <laughs> yeah. I just want to try and pause it so we don't. Yeah. That's the start of the theme tune there. I want, I want to save the theme tune, tune until next time because it's it's amazing. Right. Is... Fucking hell, all right. <laughs> you can actually skip everything by pressing start, by the way. I didn't know that. This is Snake. Do you read me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everything. <clears throat> there you go. Just stop there. Right, so there we go. So, yes, thank you very much for watching. Uh, we'll be back next week with uh, part two. What are your opinions, guys, of this one so far? Do you like it more already? It looks like a better game to play. It, it to feels be much better. The, I mean, it's the, the stealth is very, very difficult in this one because there's no radar. You've got a battery that you can use to to power certain other gadgets like the AP sensor and the motion sensor, but it's yeah. not quite. You know, it's a bit more shit. Uh, you know, then then later on you have to start managing like your your health and your stamina and making sure you don't get poisoned from things and it, it's a lot more in depth. That the, uh, the, survival the layout of the map is much better where it's not just rectangular corridors and square rooms. Yeah, it's yeah. a bit more interesting. Even though, as I said, it is a bit disorientating right now because it's it's all quite similar. But I'll get used to it. I think. You have to go as you, you sort of have to go at a bit more of a slower, deliberate pace. Um, to get to get through unseen there's a lot of crawling in grass and observation of your environment like using the binoculars is quite handy stand and look at what's ahead of you a little mm -hmm. bit like that kind of stuff is really handy in this game yeah i think i'll be doing a lot more of that it'll be a bit slow yeah in general i think it'll just be a bit slower paced than the second one because when you when you do get seen in the second one at least you've got a bit of speed on you and you can get out of the room fairly quick whereas this you're crouching slightly all the time and you you know whenever you go past something you walk slower and just a bit more difficult to get away mm. right anyway so yes thank you very much for watching everyone we will see you next week bye bye see you later doodle pip